Hey everybody, it's Bryce here from CodeLife.io and today we are talking about WebSockets. So I've seen a lot of people asking this question lately about should I implement long polling or WebSockets? If you don't know what either of those are, don't worry. It's not too complicated. Uh, the concept of long polling is, say for example, you have a backend or an API that you need to get data from and people are adding more information into your database, let's say. So let's say you have a blog and there's comments being added and you want the comments to show up in real time as they're added. Uh, so a shortcut you take is long polling where you'll make requests, I don't know, every 15 seconds or so. You'll keep making requests asking, you know, get me all comments for this particular blog post. And then you're actually displaying those and then re-rendering those on the page. Um, so you can see it's pretty easy to implement. You just do a like set interval in JavaScript, which will you set amount of time you want it to continuously do some sort of logic and it'll just keep doing it. So every 15 seconds, just get all the new comments uh, for a blog post. But let's say that isn't good enough because maybe every 15 seconds isn't fast enough. And sure, you could turn up the time in between and shorten that interval. Um, or not turn up the time, turn down that time in between. And you can actually pull a lot fat, a lot sooner. So let's say you do it every one second, but that's pretty taxing on your server, right? Because every second has to go down to the database, get all the records, bring them back to you. Um, and you don't want to do that. It's a lot, a lot of stress on your server. Also with long polling, easy to implement, but as you start to scale, it's going to be taxing on your back end or API. Uh, reason being that, let's say every 15 seconds you have, you know, long polling happening, and it's making every 15 seconds making requests to your back end, and let's say you get up to 10,000, you know, active users on your website. Uh, every 15 seconds, it means four times a minute every user is querying your API, which that adds up at 10,000 users times four requests per minute. That's 40,000 requests a minute which doesn't include them clicking around on the pages and whatnot. So it becomes um, a little bit of a burden on your back end pretty quickly. Um, but you can implement WebSockets. So WebSockets work a little differently. So instead of actually making HTTP requests all the time, it opens up a socket connection to your back end. And essentially it tunnels that traffic back and forth Without having to issue HTTP requests, which can have a little bit of overhead because they have to create a packet and there's additional information on each packet that gets sent with every request, whereas this doesn't have the additional overhead. So it's a little more cumbersome to set up because instead of just saying like on your front end, make this request every 15 seconds, you actually have to implement some stuff on some logic in your back end. That way you can handle um, having multiple users connect to it emitting these events or messages to all the users or particular users. You may have logic where you only want certain people to see certain things. So you may not want to broadcast to everyone on every page. So it can be a little more work to get right and get set up in the way you want, but you can have uh, great performance benefits. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Um, and I'm going to build a, if you didn't know already, we're going to build a uh, small chat room application where multiple users can join. It lets you know that a certain user joined. Um, and then you can type a message and it'll show for everybody who's on that chat room. So real simple application. We're going to build Node.js. We're going to use Socket.io for the WebSocket uh, library. Make it pretty easy. And then we're just going to use uh, basic JavaScript with uh, a little bit of jQuery to make this happen. So let's go ahead and you see I got the Node.js website up. Um, go ahead and download. Either one of these two will work. I think I'm running this 8.40 current, but 6.11.2 will work just fine. Download that. That'll install the uh, node and the uh, node package uh, manager, which you'll need to install some dependencies. Then uh, if you want to go to Socket.io, you can check it out. Uh, they got some little demos here. You can click on getting started. So this is the library we're going to use to actually implement our chat um, or WebSocket logic for our chat room. That way we can broadcast events to everybody. Um, so they have their own chat room application demo, which I kind of loosely follow. 
Uh, we do things a little different, uh, but you can kind of see how they do it and implement it. They got to explain some things, give you some links. I'm not sure if this is up to date, but uh, no, it looks like it's a little out of date, possibly. But that's okay because we have our tutorial, which we're going to run through right meow. So let's jump into it. So let's go ahead and start off by creating a new directory. Let's see, make directory chat uh, demo. Let's see in chat demo. Boom. Do that down here too. All right. Now we're in there. Let's go ahead and add a couple of files. So we know we'll need an index.html file. We'll need a index.js file for our Node.js server. Um, what else? Uh, make directory, have a public directory. What all we got in here? Public. Hmm. Um, and let's do npm init. We'll initialize it as a uh, for our node modules here. That sounds good. Version 1.0. Socket IO demo chat demo. And index.js. You can change it if you want to rename that file for whatever reason. Node test command. Git repository. You can add that later. None. Put our name. Um, is that okay? Yes. Perfect. Now we should have some other stuff there. Um, what else we want to add? I think that's it. So let's open this up and add them. Set this bad boy up. So a couple of files here. And so we want to install a couple of things. Let's grab this here. So we're going to run npm install socket.io dash dash save. And so that's going to save that to our package.json file as one of our dependencies in our project. So that'll go ahead and install. Um, we're also using Express. So Express is a Node.js uh, framework to allow us to easily handle um, requests, uh, response and requests. So we'll install that. Boom. All right. I think we're looking pretty good. Um, so let's bust out our Express. Uh, or Node.js uh, server file here. So index.js will be the point of entry. Um, so you see package.json. Um, we want to add, I'm going to jump around here a little bit. Let's add a script in there for start. So when we run npm start, it'll trigger this script and it'll run node index.js, which will be this file here. So awesome. Save that. And let's get writing. So we'll say constant express equals will require express const app equals express. So this is just stuff you gotta do to set up the express server here. Const server equals require HTTP. We need this. Let's see, server. Uh, const io. So this is actually going to be for um, our socket io library we're importing here. So we require uh, socket.io, which you remember we saved that as our one of our dependencies, and we need to pass that uh, server. That's right. Um, let's import path as well, which is from Node.js. It'll help us out here in a second. You'll see require path. And we'll say, we'll set the port, const port equals. So 
we can set it from an environment variable or we will just default to port 3000. Easy enough. Now let's say app.use, say express.static path.join dir name for directory name. Um, so that's gonna expose our public directory we created as you see here. So we're gonna put our CSS and our JavaScript in there to kind of help break up this application so it's not all in one file. So all that's saying is um, it's gonna make it available so we can just hit slash like JavaScript slash whatever um, to reach that file. Then we're gonna do app.set. We're gonna set a view engine of EJS. There's a bunch of different ones out there, pug and whatever, whatever you want to use. Um, but I'm just going to use kind of the generic EJS. Um, so we're going to say app dot set, let's say app dot get. Um, so when we hit the root um, path, just slash call function, we have the request and the response. And we'll say we want to res, send the response here, send file. So we're going to return a file back to the users when they hit slash or, or root directory. And we'll use that dir name uh, plus, oops, there we go. Um, say index.html. So what that will do is actually return our index.html file to uh, anyone who hits the root directory there. Um, then let's say, all right, so now we will call server.listen and listening on the port, pass it a function for the callback here. Um, let's just console log so we can see that we're there. We'll say listening on port and port we're actually listening on. Now we're gonna, so now our, our app would be serving up on port 3000, everything would be dandy, good to go. But now we wanna implement the socket IO logic so we have a couple things we need to wire up here. So what we'll say is io.on, so it's listening. Remember on's kind of a listening trigger. Uh, listening for an event connection function, which takes a socket. And we will console log, because on connection, that means the user connected. We'll say, User connected. So we're really excited there. Um, and also in here, once we've connected, um, let's go ahead and handle a new message gets passed in. And we'll say socket dot on. We'll say new message. So we're just kind of namespacing it. You can make this whatever you want it to be. I'll say function, I'll say, I'll say message object, and we'll say io.emit new message. And what do we want to emit? The message object. So this may look a little funny, right? Because we're listening for a new message, and then we're emitting a new message. Um, but this makes sense because what we want to do is all the clients that are connecting to us, whenever they emit new message, it's going back to the server, to the back end, right? Because that's where the socket connection is open. So it's so the server is listening for on a new message. When new message comes in, it's going to go ahead and just pass it along and emit it down to everyone else. And I'm trying to remember, I think if you want to admit it to everyone but yourself, you'd say like, um, is it io.broadcast.emit? I think it is new message. 
and that'll just broadcast it out to everyone but yourself. Um, but in this case, we also want to get the message so publishes in the chat room. So we're just going to use io.emit. Or is it socket? Yeah, socket.broadcast admit. Anyways, um, more information than you'll need for this tutorial. Um, then we need to handle when a new member joins. Joins the chat room. So we'll do the same kind of logic here, socket.on. We'll say new member. Um, and again, this is something arbitrary I made up. You don't need the new the colon there. I just like kind of namespacing it with what I'm doing, whether it's a new, an edit, update, something like that, and then what you're actually updating. Um, I'll say function, and we'll say the name of the person that were that just joined. We'll say io dot uh, new member. So again, we're just gonna shout it back out to everyone, and the data we're gonna pass along is the name. And that should be it. So if we just open up this here, we'll just give a little shout out message here. So that should work. So I think if we go back here and run npm start, uh oh, error. Did I type something wrong? Server, con server. Yeah, what was I doing there? Passing the server to itself. Um, yes, let's see. I messed that up. What am I doing? I'm trying to look at this other screen here. Server. Let me pass app. So we would require express. App is equal to calling the express function. Then our server is requiring HTTP. Um, and then we pass the app into that. There we go. So now, try that again. PM start. Listening on port 3000 and a user has connected. So let's see. I think I may have it open on another window. Let's see, localhost 3000. Welcome to my chat room. Boom. So there you go. So we're serving up that HTML page, that index.html page. Returning that back when we hit just kind of the root uh, directory. And in the next part, we'll actually go over starting to implement um, some of the chat room stuff and building out our uh, our website a little bit uh, a little bit better here. Perfect. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Take care.